What up, everybody? BMF Season 2, Marquisha's husband, Boom, got arrested, and in the process, detectives Brian and Jen show Boom the pictures of Terry and Marquisha that they took of them hooking up at the hotel. A while later, after Boom was locked up, T and Keisha started making their relationship public, only to run into Boom's lieutenant named Saint at Hair Wars on the way out, and he warned T to stay away from Boom's but T didn't take heed to this warning, so season two concluded with Saint opening fire into T's car while him and Keisha were driving down the road, resulting in Keisha getting shot. But episode one of this season, Saint was taken out by a PA hitter. At around this same time, thinking that they were in the free and clear with their relationship, with Saint now out of the picture, T bought a house for him and Marquisha to move into, and her kids also. But by episode 2, Marquisha already had a change of mind letting T know that she doesn't think that they should be living together or even making their relationship public because she was still feeling away after being shot. But nonetheless, after then moving into an apartment, T continued seeing Marquisha. Then T's baby mother, Wanda, had his second child in the process. T gifted Wanda with a new town and country minivan. And while Keisha was at Terry's apartment looking for a pin, she found the papers to the minivan, then turned around and asked T if he got Wanda any gifts that could help her out with the baby. T, feeling uncomfortable about telling Keisha the truth, told her no. But Marquisha bothered that T lied to her about this, possibly even jealous that T didn't buy her a new car also, went on over to Wanda's mother's with gifts of her own, saying that she isn't going anywhere and trying to make peace with Wanda. But it is possible Keisha really only went over there to see the van. But she also found out that T bought her and Wanda the same fur coat, only adding to her jealousy on top of Wanda telling her that she's the real queen because she has T's blood. All this likely only making Keisha all the more jealous than she already was. Keeping in mind that T had even spent the previous night over there with Wanda taking care of his newborn daughter. So likely, Keisha was already feeling jealous about this anyway. But then sometime later on in the episode, Marquisha was stopped by a guy named Vince who used to do security for Boom. Who Marquisha was very friendly with. And Vince, knowing that Boom is locked up, instead of a ticket, he gave Keisha his number. So we can see that Vince went from working for a kingpin to working for the police force. So it's obvious that Vince is dirty or willing to work for the highest bidder. But since Keisha was feeling jealous about Wanda, she decided to turn the tables on T. At the end of the episode, we see that Keisha called Vince to meet up at the bar as T walked up on the two, asking what was going on. Then T and Vince stood face to face, ready to throw down over Keisha as Keisha watched. And after Vince walked off telling Keisha to call him, she let T know that she was turned on by that. But one big mistake that T did was telling Vince during their face-to-face -face that he was a local business owner. Vince, being a cop, will likely start harassing T at his place of business. Keep it in mind that T hardly uses that restaurant as a real restaurant, but as a spot to meet with his crew and to clean his money. But now that T has made an op with this local cop, T's restaurant might be the new spot for the cops. So they can start harassing him. Because the fact Vince already knows about Boom, he likely suspects that T's in the game also. Otherwise, how would an 18 to 19 year old become a restaurant owner? And how would he take care of this gold digger, Marquisha? The episode 8 trailer also shows T and Vince having another confrontation with Vince telling T that Marquisha is very high class. And T doesn't have what it takes to keep up. And T replying to Vince... I know where you're at, and I know where you'll be. We can also see that Vince and Marquisha at the bar flirting with Marquisha smiling real big for Vince. So in my own personal opinion, T's young, he's rich. So I don't understand why he's going to put himself in a position to compete for Marquisha when he could have just about any female that he wants. But that could be part of the problem also, that T's young and he's rich. And even though he didn't grow up rich, he has had money since he was young and might have spoiled himself and might feel like whatever he wants, he has to have. But we can bet that Vince is going to be a problem for T moving forward. 
Get me to Veronica Jen. She let her father know that she's ready to walk through the fire to avenge the death of her partner, Detective Amberson. Brian also let Jen know that she can never take down the Andreases by the book. Because of that, Jen used her snitch Lenny to get her into Jen's gambling spot, wearing a blonde wig where she was introduced to Henry, who was intrigued by Detective Jen. Henry also noticed the burn marks on Jen's arms. And it is possible that she bonded with Jen, seeing those burn marks, keeping in mind that Henry cut herself on the side a few episodes ago. So we don't know if that kind of behavior is normal for Henry or not. But she wasn't even phased after doing that, like it could be something she's used to doing. But Jen is playing a very dangerous game, going deep cover against the Andreases, considering she's a suspended cop in one of the districts that Blaze controls. Especially considering Blaze has former and active cops on the payroll who, similar to Vince and Boom, could be doing security for Henry. And all it would take would be one of Jen's co-workers spotting her with Henry and letting Henry know who she is. Then also keep in mind that Jen got suspended specifically for mentioning Henry's name. So there's also a chance that the captain already gave Blaze information in regards to Jen and that she was investigating into Henry. Keep it in mind that someone laid down consequences to Blaze about Henry getting the cop killed. So with that said, Blaze also has somebody he has to answer to. And that could very well be the police captain who suspended Jen himself. Because the fact that Andreas is, is too tight in and connected, I don't think this is going to end well for Jen. Then there's also the fact that Jen isn't even a cop right now because she is suspended. So what exactly does she plan on doing to Henry? Because she's not going to go in there as a cop who could actually arrest someone. The only backup she has is Detective Bryant. And I don't know how he's going to serve as effective backup either. Because the fact that he's no longer a cop. But also the fact that Henry already knows him. So he can't even go undercover with Jen either. Then there's also the fact that Lenny got arrested. And because of how tied in the Andreas is... is they could definitely find out about that and that could point them in the direction of Jen being a cop also. So I do think there is a very good possibility that episode 8 will be the end for Detective Jen because this episode is titled Code Red. The term Code Red basically meaning an emergency notification. I also read that it could potentially mean that an officer is in danger and this could have a lot of meanings for this specific episode including Meech dealing with the Red Dogs or with the Miami Killers like I've already talked about in other videos. Make sure to go on my page and check them out if you haven't done so already. And it could also indicate that T is facing a code red situation dealing with Markeisha and her cop friend Vince. But the main reason I think this episode is titled Code Red is because I think Henry is going to kill Detective Jen. And as Brian is supposed to be her backup, he will most likely show up a second late only to find Jen already dead. But my question is, if this actually does happen, will Brian find a way to take down Henry in the process? And one last thing before I go, I also think we'll get to see another side of Henry this episode as she begins to open up to Jen and being vulnerable before finding out she's getting played, likely only making the kill that much more savage. And there you have it. Leave your thoughts, theories, and predictions in the comments.